Welcome back. In this sub-lesson, now we are going to talk about the OSPF databases. We'll look at how the information in the OSPF databases can be used to draw a topology, and how that information can also be used to troubleshoot or validate other pieces of information in OSPF network. So coming back to the previous example that we shared in lesson 1.2 and 1.3, we are now going to look at the OSPF databases for area 0, area 1, area 2, and area 3. How they look like and what information do we see in the OSPF database? So if I go on to NX1 and look at the information for show IP OSPF database and hit enter, I can see for area 0, I have the router link state. So route link ID loopback 0 of NX1, NX2, and NX3. And this is their advertising router IDs. And we get the sequence number, check some values, and the age along with that for all of these LSAs. This comes in handy if you're troubleshooting a routing issue in an OSPF deployment. Then comes after the router link state for area 0, we have the network link state, which is LSA2. And we can see the link IDs for the connected links. So, And these are being advertised by the respective router IDs. So if you notice here, we do not see any information for the advertising router for NX1. We are on NX1 itself, thus we don't need to see the information for the network link states. We should be seeing that being received from the connected or adjacent routers. Then we have the summary network LSA, which is part of area zero itself. So here we see the summary LSAs for the link connecting NX7, NX8, NX4, 5, 6, the link between 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 7 and 8. And along with that, we also see the summary LSA for the router IDs of 1, NX4, NX5, NX6, NX7, and NX8. So if you look at this information, and just with the information present in the OSPF database for area 0, you can pretty much draw the topology or get a fair amount of idea of how your OSPF topology would look like. If not about the other areas, you will still be able to figure out your topology for area zero itself. So before we move on to other areas, let's see how we can draw a topology for area zero. And, and I'm hoping it, it will be fun for you guys watching it. So I look at the show IP OSPF database uh, detail. And I look at the router link states for area 0. So these are the router link states. And um, I can see on from 192.168.1.1, we can ignore the link connected to a stub network, the transit network. This is one we need and the link connected to a transit network. So if you notice this output, the first output, the link state ID is 192.168.1.1. The advertising router is 192.168.1.1. And gives us the information about how many links are part of that particular node, the advertising router or the link state ID. So if there are three of them, we are not really concerned about the top one at the moment. We are looking at the other two. So if I look at the designated router DR, so it also tells you which one is the DR, which one is the BDR. So we have the DR 10.1.2.2 and the router interface, your own link is 10.1.2.1. Let's go back to the drawing board where we can draw this topology. So we have this, say for the VR on uh, NX1. This is NX1. And from here, let's add two other nodes. And we are going to see, we don't know as of yet what they really are. Uh, let's assume um, we are going blindfolded. And from here, I have two links that are shown in the OSPF topology database from the router link state. So from here, I connect this link. And another link from here, I connect this link. So these two links are going to two different nodes, and we can um, Rather than naming the node names, we can just say one of the link is 10.1.2.1 on one side here and 10.1.2.2 uh, on the other side. So here, okay? And we also add that, remember, the 2.2 was the DR, so this is the DR. Okay, so now the other link is 10.1.3.3 on the other side. Our local side is 10.1.3.1 and the DR is 10.1.3.3. .3 .3. 
So let's do this process again. So this is 3.1 and um, this is 3.3 and 3.3 is the DR. Okay, now if I look at the show IP OSPF neighbor command output back on NX1, so show IP OSPF neighbor, I can see that is this guy is the DR and this guy is the DR. And uh, that information is also validated from this output. Okay, so let's look at the output. You can look at the OSPF database in a different format or using a slightly modified CLI. So you can use show IP OSPF database advertising router and you can say 192.168.2.2 because we are not just looking at the information advertised by ourselves. We are also looking at the information advertised by the adjacent routers as well. And we can use a detail keyword to look at the information. So this is the information that you're receiving from 192.168.2.2. So let's look at what is the information that we have received. So on this router link state, we have the DR 10.2.3.3 and our own link is 10.2.3.2. So it's connecting to the three subnet. So let's go back and say um, we connect a line, this guy, Right, and uh, we say 10.2.3.2, and the other side link is 10.2.3.3. Okay, and which one is the DR? The DR is 10.2.3.3. So we draw this DR, we just add this DR flag here. So this makes our DR, DR, DR. Uh, in this three node topology. And the other link that we have from NX2 is, uh, if you notice here, we are looking at the information on 192.168.2.2. It says the designated router itself is itself, 10.1.2.2, and the router interface is 10.1.2.2 itself. So this is kind of reconfirming that when NX1 was displaying 10.1.2.2 is the DR, this information is being validated from here. Okay, let's now look at NX3. So we can look at 3.3 and um, we can see the same information. So we have 10.2.3.3, it is the DR itself, we have already flagged it. And then we have 10.1.3.3, it is the DR itself, and we have flagged it. So we can see the information. Using this information from the OSPF database, we are now successfully able to build the OSPF topology, at least for area zero, right? So we can just put it here, area, right? So it's fun, right? Um, you, using, using the OSPF databases, uh, there's so much information that we can get out of it and it's in detail. So if we go back to NX1, we can see that if we do show IP OSPF database, advertising router 192.168.2.2 detail, and we look at the network link states, and we can see here the network 10.1.2.2 which is from the advertising router 192.168.2.2 is attached to router with this router ID and is also attached, uh, well, this is its own router ID and this is the attached router ID of the other side of the link. So we get to confirm what are the nodes and how the topology is looking like. So the link between two advertising routers or two routers can be seen as part of the network link states. Similarly, there are summary network link states, but those are the networks that we are receiving from other areas. So we'll focus on that later on. But this has helped us completely draw the topology for area zero, and we can easily name them if you know which router ID is assigned at which place, you can even know the node names as well, or you can recall the node names. Okay, so now, 
Let's look at the databases again and look at different summary LSAs. This is an exercise that we did a couple of minutes ago to understand what we can do or what we can achieve using the OSPF database. The OSPF databases are primarily helpful in building the topology and getting the full view of the network. So now let's look at the show IP OSPF database without the detailed keyword. And we can see there are summary network link states and then, since NX1 is also connected to area 1, we can see the router link state, the summary network link state, the type 7 LSA, and the type 5 LSA. The type 5 LSA is for the prefix, the type 7 LSA, which got converted into type 5. So this type 7 LSA is being converted into type 5. That's what we can see in the OSPF database. And the summary LSA shows us that it is advertising a default route. Remember, in the previous lesson, we did configure the area as totally NSSA area. So show run OSPF, and we have a no summary keyword. So we should be advertising only the default route into the OSPF uh, area one. So this is what we have. And if you look at the router link states, we are not receiving any other link IDs apart from 1, 7, and 8, which are part of area 7 itself or we are not receiving any other summary LSAs, which are part of non-area one areas. Now let's look at NX5. This node is part of a normal area two, which is connected to NX2. So if I look at the show IP OSPF database and look at the summary LSAs and the router link state LSAs and the other LSA types, we can easily understand a couple of things here. So the first thing we notice is the router link state LSAs. In the router link state LSAs, we have um, router NX2, NX4, and NX5, which are from their respective advertising routers. And using the database detail, we can draw this topology as well for area two. Then we have the summary network link state LSAs because we are not filtering on any of the summary LSAs in this area. So we receive the summary LSA for the link between NX1 and NX2, NX1 and NX3, NX1 and NX7, NX1 and NX8, NX2 and NX3, NX3 and NX6, NX7 and NX8. These are all the summary LSAs that we receive for the links. And then we have the loopbacks of those router IDs, or which are configured as the router IDs. We are also receiving those. So we can see a lot of summary network link state information being received. Then we have the summary ASBR LSA, which is the link towards the ASBR. So who is advertising us the ASBR information? NX1, because NX1 is where we have uh, the NSSA area, and within that NSSA area, we have an ASBR, which is redistributing BGP into OSPF. And the information about NX1 is being advertised by NX2 to NX5. So we have this information. And we have the Type 5 LSA, because the Type 5 LSA is for the one that got converted from Type 7 to Type 5. Then finally, we move on to NX6. In NX6, if you look at the show IP OSPF database command, and we see, remember this node was configured in the previous sub-lesson to just totally stubby area. So if you are looking at the database on this node, we are going to see the router link states, which is NX3 and NX6 information, because those are the only two nodes participating in area three. And we have the default route because of the totally stubby area. The ABR is only going to advertise us the default route. Now, if I go back to NX3 and say, show run OSPF and remove the command area three stub no summary. And if I come back on NX6 and look at the database again, there's the difference. Why? Because now we are receiving a whole lot of summary network link state LSAs uh, from the ABR regarding the links between the different nodes in other areas, which are not part of area three.